This episode is going to be a little bit different in that there's no intro, not really a lot of action, and it's kind of just a walk around slash introduction of my new car, which is this 1967 Ford LTD. If you watched my last upload, it was about me bringing this car home, which really came all the way from New York, though I met the previous owner, Jeff, in Virginia, which was about halfway for us. Anyways, um, my two major problems with this car were that it was leaking coolant and also transmission oil and was having some problems shifting. So I set about checking on the leaks and um, I found one leak at the uh, heater control valve and another one on the intake manifold, but I wasn't really sure about the transmission leaks. So I hosed the thing down with some brake cleaner and then uh, we took Kenneth to ride his bike over at the pump track at our local BMX site and then came back home and then I headed up the road in the LTD to uh, the local O'Reilly's my plan was I was gonna buy a little transmission oil and see if I could get the thing to shift from second into third by topping up the fluid and maybe run it once it was clean from the brake clean and find the transmission leak. I got home after filling it up with transmission oil though and it still wouldn't shift and I still hadn't found the leak and I thankfully bought some foaming engine cleaner so I hosed the thing down with that a few days later and then cranked it up and found it was leaking from one of the cooler rubber lines which isn't a big deal and hopefully we'll solve the shifting issue and if not, I'll look into things like the vacuum modulator and um, maybe throw the filter in it that was already in the trunk. Anyways, the rest of this episode is kind of just going to be a walk around of the car and me talking about some of the various features it has and just kind of some of my thoughts about this car. It is really cool. It has pillarless hard tops, so if you saw that in the first shot, um, there's no B pillar between the front and rear doors which I think is so cool and this car just goes on forever it is a yacht and there's so many really cool details on this thing uh, I love the 390 slash emblem that tells you what engines in it moving to the interior the embroidered stitching on the seats which are big enough that Kenneth can stretch out and fall asleep on these things and a, a grown person probably could too if you had to be homeless and live out of a car this is the car to do it in and check out those door handles I just showed you how they flip up and then open and then I just love how the windows roll down and the quarter glass or the smokers glass or whatever you want to call it have separate roll up knobs for each one super classy and the interior of this car really is just a nice place to be the dashboard is like ornate I'm not really sure how else to describe it there's just so much going on and I love little details in it like the temperature idiot light not only does it tell you that it's too hot it also tells you when it's cold and of course there's the ashtray the size of a small trash can I've said this earlier, but the interior of this car is absolutely cavernous. It is like riding down the road on two sofas, front and rear. And the exterior of this car is similarly gilded and detailed as the interior, and it really just gives this car a feeling of being from another time. And there's a lot of really good reasons for that when you get into the history of this particular year model car and I'll get to that in a little bit but first I want to show you guys just some of the historical documents I will say that came with this thing so check this out all of this was in the glove box you've got the original owners um, quality care card for when he took it in to be serviced the owner's manual showing the date that it was ordered and who it was ordered to and when I was poking around underneath the car I even found the original build sheet stuffed up underneath the dash and I fished it out and 
Unfortunately, it came out in pieces, but I spent like an hour and a half just sort of painstakingly putting this thing back together like a jigsaw puzzle and then laminating it because I just thought it was so cool. And I don't know, I, I just love documentation. There's a, a lot that goes with this particular car. And I think in addition to all the documentation, part of the reason this car feels so special to me is because this is the first car that I've ever owned that really feels like a classic. Most of the stuff that I've owned has been 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, I've owned some early 70s and even a 67 Volkswagen, but Volkswagens just don't feel like classic cars to me until you get back into the 50s. Anyways, I think part of the reason why this car just feels like it's from another time to me involves understanding how it came to exist. And the LTD at this point in time had just been recently spun off from the Ford Galaxy line, which was introduced in 1959. And in 1959, the Galaxy was based on the Fairlane, but by 1960, it was its own nameplate and it was kind of the top nameplate within the Ford lineup. And in 1965, there was a body style change and that's where you saw the double stack headlights and the hexagonal taillights like this car has and the 65 year model range topper was the galaxy ltd and it had standard features like courtesy lights in the doors the glove box the ashtray in the trunks and rear vents for a four-door car and uh, they advertised it having a liquid satin ride which this car definitely has it rides like a waterbed on wheels and in 67 which is the year that this car is ltd became its own nameplate but it was only in this body style for 67 and 68 and then in 69 ltd continued as its own nameplate in a completely different body style and then somewhere in the 70s the ltd nameplate got downsized it was more of a mid-sized car so this car really is a holdover from the big full-size cars that go all the way back into the early 60s and late 50s where everything was jet age and space age styled and I think that's why this car feels so special to me and like such from a different time. And I really meant to flip this car to have some more money to put into my Mercury and my Mustang, but I have accidentally totally fallen in love with it. So I guess that's the end of this episode. We'll see you guys next time. I have a lot of thoughts and options about where I could go with this car and we'll make another episode about that. Thanks for watching.